Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Subscribe today and get exclusive member content, in-episode credit, and fun Off the Cuff merchandise. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Off the Cuff. Today, be warned, I'm going after your sweet spot. I know what you're thinking. How do I know it's your sweet spot? Because it's my sweet spot. So I think it's your sweet spot, too. <laughs> anyway, today, I'm going to show you how to make homemade, low-carb, chocolate-glazed donuts. Oh, boy, yeah. And if there's time, I'm also going to show you how to make homemade, low carb sugary donut holes sounds super yum yum doesn't it oh yeah it's going to be now if you're like me and you eat low carb or uh, you're a type 2 diabetic and you have to eat low carb sugary treats and snacks and desserts can be a bit of a challenge yeah i mean even though i eat low carb every now and then a half hour an hour two hours after dinner i crave something sweet and frankly if i'm not prepared for it I have to white knuckle through it. And therein lies the rub, because right now, you don't have a lot of choices where you can run out to the store and buy something low carb. Yeah, the stores really haven't caught up yet, although they are trying. As an example, if you like pasta, or if you like bagels, you can find really good pasta and bagels, but they're online. Yeah, which means you have to order them on your computer or your phone, and they're more expensive, and you gotta pay shipping. There are some products, though, where they are catching up, like pizza crust. Yeah, a lot of stores have a low-carb pizza crust. Most of them are cauliflower, so if you like cauliflower, that's cool. If you don't, well, then you still have to look for some alternatives. On a personal note, earlier this week, I was in a big chain store, and I went down the bread aisle, and I found this. Yes, low-carb white bread. I bought it. I ate it. It's terrific. It's not too expensive. Yeah. So this is actually a really good viable alternative. And it's showing you that, uh, well, good things are happening. And things are getting better all the time. Just this week, I got some low-carb hamburger buns. They were delicious. I got them at a national chain that starts with a W. I think you can do the math there. And as far as donuts go, there's a certain national donut chain that starts with a D and a D, where you can go in and ask for low-carb options, and they do have low-carb breakfast sandwiches, which are great, but we want donuts. Yes, so that's why you're in luck today. Today, I'm going to show you how to make homemade, low-carb, chocolate-glazed donuts with sprinkles. They're going to be awesome, and you're going to love it. You won't have to go on the black market. <laughs> oh, boy. Who are you? Shh. I'm on the down low. Dig? Dig? Yeah, I, uh, I'm here because I heard you're in the market. In the market? Listen, Jackson, are you going to repeat everything I say, or are we going to get some business done? Jackson. Now get... Let me guess. You're here for the tour. What tour? Really? Okay. How can I help you? No, brother. I'm here to help you. Help me? Absolutely. Joey Bag of Donuts. B-O-D. Oh, you're here for the donuts. Absolutely. That's right. I got whatever you want. You need it. I got it. Mm. Frosted? Unfrosted. Uh, what's the matter? No jelly donuts? Oh, I had some jellies, but I left them in my other jacket. It's the tweed with the patch. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know. This is, you'll love this. Here. I wait, got wait, 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 what are we doing? What are you doing? I got some brand new Boston creams. They're in my truck. No, no, no. Okay. Look. It's okay. Pull up your fans. Put you, yeah, you just, okay, just, right, just put right. your fans. You, okay. You, you know, uh, so listen, um, uh, um, um, it's a bag of donuts. Yeah, but uh, listen, I'm, I'm looking for low carb donuts. Low-carb donuts. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Nobody's ever asked me for low carb anything. Well, I'm a type two diabetic, so when I eat, it really should be low carb. Well, I can get you a carburetor for a 67 Chevy. Oh, uh, not the same thing. Uh, mm. Low carb donuts. Yeah. I know, I'll put a flyer out for you. Flyer? Are you gonna start? Sorry. Look, uh, what I mean is I'll put the word out on the street. Well, you know what? I was just about to whip up a batch of low-carb donuts in here, so you don't have to put the word out. You sure? I'm sure. You're positive? I'm positive. He's I'm positive, 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 positive. All right, look, I got to get going because I got to get rid of these donuts before they get stale. I'm you know? sorry. I wish I could help you more. Yeah, I don't feel so bad. Actually, there's a police station around the corner. These will be gone in five minutes. <laughs> You're going to use that tired old trope. <laughs> tired old trope? Yeah. You wrote it. Great. Now I don't even remember my line. And here's the ingredients. That's it. What he said. Okay, like he said, here are the ingredients. First up, for our low carb chocolate donuts. One cup almond flour. One third of a cup urethritol that can be powdered or granulated. Three tablespoons each of melted unsweetened chocolate, softened butter, and cocoa powder. Four tablespoons heavy cream four eggs, and one teaspoon each of baking powder and vanilla extract. Now for the chocolate glaze, two ounces sugar-free chocolate, one teaspoon urethritol. Now for the low-carb donut holes, one half cup almond flour, two tablespoons coconut flour, one and a half tablespoon softened butter, two eggs, one quarter cup urethritol. Again, it can be granulated or powdered. Two tablespoons heavy cream, one half teaspoon each of baking powder and vanilla extract. And finally, for the sugary glaze, one half cup powdered urethritol, one tablespoon heavy cream, one half teaspoon vanilla extract and water as needed for viscosity. So I'm not a baker, but I am prepared I have my silicone donut molds. Yeah, now you can use silicone if you want. You can also use metal, but uh, donut molds are advised. Okay, now according to the recipe that I'm using, it has a very specific way of putting the ingredients together. First, it says to use the butter. <laughs> there you go, the, the softened but unremovable butter, the cream, and the sweetener. The one third cup of powdered urethritol I'm using, you can use, you can actually use whatever you like. I just choose to use this, put it in there. We're going to mix it up. Okay, it's all mixed together in there. Okay, and now it says to put in the vanilla, the, uh, you know, I never know whether to, oh, what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> Go the eggs <laughs> and the vanilla, which I did not have a clear vessel for. But here's your teaspoon of vanilla. Stir it up again. Okay, now everything else goes in. Let's do the melted chocolate first. Like I said, this is melted unsweetened chocolate. Now the chocolate I'm going to use later is already sweetened, but I'll explain that then. Okay, this is your baking powder, the cocoa powder, and the almond flour, which is gonna be the base of your dough. And I got some, and I miss I missed some here, so if it doesn't come out, blame it on me. There we go. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, it's becoming a batter. All right, well that's preheating. Let's spoon out the donuts. Okay, I removed the batter from the machine and took out the blade. Here is, well, here are, look at this. Surprise, yeah. These are our donut molds. And I'm spraying them with a non-stick cooking spray. I'll get to you later. And here we go with the batter. This is gonna be the most challenging thing because, uh, 
When it comes to doing things neat and pristine in the kitchen, that ain't me, but I try. And you want to make sure you don't overfill it because it's going to rise. You don't want the hole to disappear. Like I said, the difference between these and real, and I should say regular donuts is, uh, of course, these are not fried. Uh, that saves in calories too and time and, uh, and with me, probably mess. Yes. Okay. So we have three done. We, get, we can make that. Well, we'll clean that up later. And here comes the second three. These look so rich. I'm so tempted. I don't know how you are about this kind of stuff, but I am so tempted to taste the batter. I really am. But I am resisting it. I am not going to taste it until it's baked and ready. One more, and you know what? We're only going to need six. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to big enough for six donuts today. And you know what? That's fine. That's, that's... Nope. Okay. I think I have enough for six. Yeah. We have enough to do six. Okay, and now to reinforce stability... I'm going to double these up. That makes it a little, little stronger. Okay. Now we are ready for the oven. Into the oven. Middle rack is fine. All right. 13 to 15 minutes. Now, let's melt our chocolate glaze. Okay, so while we wait for the donuts to be ready, we're going to melt the chocolate. We're going to dip it in. Now, in the, uh, in the ingredients, I suggested using unsweetened chocolate and a sweetener, and you can do that. I bought these, uh, they're a name brand, they're mint flavored, they're pre-sweetened with uh, a non-sugar-free uh, uh, sweetener, and they're delicious. It's going to give the donuts a little minty flavor, so I'm going to use these. You can go and get something like this, or you can add the sugar yourself, it's up to you. Same thing, into the microwave, 30 seconds, and I bet you're wondering, why am I using such a big bowl for two ounces of chocolate? Well, when this melts in the bottom, I'll be able to put the donuts in there. See? Smart. Here we go. The chocolate is liquefied, but it is a little thick. I think I'm going to put a little bit of uh, coconut oil here and do it another 30 seconds. Okay. I put in maybe a half a teaspoon of the coconut oil. And it makes it much more liquidy. Not as thick, so you'll be able to use more of it. Perfect. We'll put this aside. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Ooh. Ooh. I'll be careful with this. How do they feel? They feel good. I just want to be careful that I don't disrupt them. And there we are. Now we let these babies cool. Okay, the donuts are in there to cool. Now we're going to move on to the donut holes. But first, it's time for food facts. It may be an exaggeration to say that everybody loves donuts, but not by much. Who doesn't love that fried dough dipped in sugar? It's perfect with cold milk, coffee, or the beverage of your choice. Donuts have been around for centuries, they have. As a matter of fact, in some ancient Native American settlements, they found fossils of donuts. Yeah, fried dough with holes even. Yeah, way back then. Donuts, as we know and love them today, came to us in the late 16th, early 17th century. Yeah, when they arrived in Manhattan, which was then known as New Amsterdam. That's Maury Amsterdam. He was on the Dick Van Dyke Show. There you go. The Dutch brought them over under the name of Olikolek. Yeah, they called them, oh, not very appetizing, was it? No, that basically meant oily cakes. You know, and that's a, that's a pretty apt name. Now, for the purpose of this show, I'm only going to concentrate on donuts that have holes. Yeah. Now, there, are, of course, are other donuts that don't have holes. We'll leave that for a different show. In the 19th century, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Gregory, whose son 
was a ship captain in New England, was famous for making donuts. Yeah, it was fried dough, and she used whatever her son had as cargo on the ship, like cinnamon and nutmeg. She also added lemon rind. Yeah, the crew loved it. They ate this whenever they could, and it served a purpose, because the lemon rind helped to prevent scurvy and colds. Now here's where it becomes really interesting. Mrs. Gregory did not invent the hole in the donut. Nope, her donuts were solid. In the center though, she put hazelnuts. The center of the dough cooked last, and the nuts ensured it would be cooked all the way through. That's where we get the name dough nuts. See? Now her son, Captain Gregory, he does take credit for inventing the hole. Because sometimes when you're sailing a ship, you know, during a storm or whatnot, you need both hands. <laughs> So he would take his mom's donuts and he would put them on the spokes of the wheel that steered the ship. So even in the worst weather or <laughs> the worst conditions, he could lean forward and take a bite of the confection. I don't know, man. Those must be some pretty tasty donuts and doesn't sound like safe sailing to me. Hey, mom. Thanks for the donuts. Well, um... How about an umbrella next time, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, I just bit a hazelnut. During World War I, the popularity of donuts skyrocketed. Our American doughboys were fighting in the foxholes in the trenches of France, and women volunteers would bring them trays of the fried treat to lift their spirits and give them a taste of home. In 1920, a refugee from Tsarist Russia by the name of Adolf Levitt became famous in the New York City Theater District for providing donuts to theater goers. They loved it so much that the crowds increased increased, so did the demand for donuts. Faster, stronger, better. Well, Mr. Levitt took it upon himself to uh, answer that by creating the world's first automated donut machine. 1934 was a big year for donuts. First off, they were highlighted at the 1934 World's Fair in Chicago, where they were billboarded as the food hit of the century of progress. Also in 1934, the Academy Award winning film, It Happened One Night, featured donuts. Yep, Clark Gable taught Claudette Colbert and the rest of America exactly how to dunk a donut. Watch. Donut. Thanks. Say, where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? Oh, now, don't you start telling me I shouldn't dunk. Of course you shouldn't. You don't know how to do it. Dunking's an art. Don't let it soak so long. A dip and flop in your mouth. You gotta hang there too long and get soft and fall off. It's all a matter of timing. Now it's time for donut trivia. Ten billion donuts are baked and consumed in the United States each and every year. That averages 30 donuts per person per year. Guilty. Washington Irving was the first author to document donuts in a piece of literature. See, he was a fan. I'm not sure what he said, but I think it was something like, donuts. Oh, wait. That was probably Homer Simpson. Okay, now we've mentioned this in the episode already. But that trope about police and donuts, well, it has some truth to it. It does. Back in the 40s and 50s, police who were working on the late shift needed a place to get refreshment and maybe sit down and write out some reports, okay? Everything was closed except for donut shops. So that's where that got popular, and it was pretty much all over the country. Now, today, lots of places are open 24 hours, but donut places, well, occasionally you'll see a a police car in front of a donut shop. So it's actually not so much a trope. It doesn't matter how it's spelled. Donuts are popular and they are plentiful. And that's Food Facts. And basically, this is the same recipe as the donuts, only I took out all the chocolate. I took out the cocoa, I took out, I took out the, the melted chocolate, and I halved it. The butter first, and then the cream. Okay, and then the sweetener. Mm. 
beautiful. Okay, the eggs, the vanilla. Mix again. Look what we're making, a mess. No, so this is the coconut powder. That absorbs a lot of moisture, by the way. The almond flour, and here we go. Okie doke. All righty then. All right, to start this off, we're going to spray only what we need. Uh, I'm gonna do this row here. Just spray what you need. If you put spray everywhere and you don't use it, it will burn. Do it like that. So it's about a tablespoon each. Now the reason why you don't overfill this is because it will, it will naturally rise. They're not gonna come out perfect. They're not gonna come out like perfect little uh, munchkins like you get, like if, like if I had a melon ball, maybe, but I don't, so. And now we can put these in the oven. And guess what? I don't have to preheat my oven because it's already still on. All right, here we go. Oven, 350, middle rack, 13 to 15 minutes. Now we're gonna make the glaze for these. Now to make the glaze for our donut holes. Here's your uh, one tablespoon of heavy cream into your sweetener. The vanilla. I said this water is, is here for viscosity. Yeah, that's exactly what it's here for. It's gonna make sure this glaze gets liquidy enough. I think that's a word, liquidy. Pour a little bit in, a little at a time. You can pour too much, but you can't pour too little. And you can see this is already mixing quite well. I think this is exactly uh, what I was looking for, for the glaze. 13 minutes, that should be enough. Oh yeah, there we are. Now we let these cool. I got these online. I, I went to a very popular shopping site, searched for low carb, sugar-free sprinkles. Put your chocolate, your donut face down in there. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit more, like that into here and there you go there's one and number six <laughs> donuts are ready now let's do those donut holes now we have our donut holes and the glaze just rolled in the glaze roll 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 there's one <laughs> this is so cool There's two. And the last one, I'm gonna try a little experiment. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's my hand's gonna get all chocolatey. But that's okay. Oh my gosh. It worked. It worked, it worked. <laughs> and you can do this too. Mmm. Donuts. Okay, I have to be honest. Uh, when I started to do this episode, actually when I planned to do this episode, I kind of thought that the product would look good. I, however, did not think it would look this amazing. I mean, it just looks so tempting. Oh man, just looking at it, it's my sweet spot. So I, I talked about sweet spot. Visually, this does it. I have a feeling that... Uh, it, with taste, it's gonna do it too. Um, I had time to do both. They really are not, I always say this, it's not difficult to do. If you have the ingredients and you have a little bit of time, you can make these treats so you can eat guilt-free. Now, the donuts are the main attraction, so that's gonna be the first one I taste. I uh, have not tasted anything on these at all. Uh, well, I did get a couple of sprinkles in my mouth. They were good, so here we go with a chocolate glazed low carb donut with sprinkles oh. Oh. oh so chocolatey you can't see it but i have goose flesh it just i can't believe that that's no sugar low carb i have mmm Look, look, mmm, moist, chocolatey, chocolate, chocolatey, chocolatey, 
Chocolatey. It's chocolatey. Chocolatey. It tastes like chocolate <laughs> in the middle. The sweetness from, of course, the sprinkles and the chocolate on the outside. Really, really, really fantastic. Now, I have tasted a little bit of the glaze by accident, but here we go with the donut hole. This is my own recipe, by the way. Um, I can't wait. Here we go. <laughs> wow. This is soft. It tastes great on the inside. Um, the, the glaze is outstanding. It really... Oh my God, it's very rich. It, 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 I feel... I, 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 the, this is fantastic. When I talk about sweet spot and satisfying a craving, this will do it. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please watch again next time. Uh, until then, be well, eat good. <laughs>